Welcome back to our series on advanced aircraft turbine modeling. In this episode, we're going to understand the basics of Pi Cycle. Let's dive right in! Trois, deux, un, top. Three, two, one, half. The Flight Test Engineering Channel. To start our basic understanding of how PyCycle works, we can go directly to their GitHub repo and check out the link in their paper and how to install it. So let's head over to their page and have a look. As you can see, to install it, all you need is to do a pip install OM PyCycle and you'll be ready to go. If you need help in setting up a Python environment similar to the one I have here, I'll leave a link in the description as well. Let's go back a bit and have a look at the paper that they link in their page. And the best way to summarize how it works is to go straight to figure number two. Let's go to page five. In essence, we'll pick the basic components for our engine in the cycle block. This is the heart of the engine, and it is here that the magic happens in terms of simulating the engine itself. And it contains all of the engineering models and thermodynamic equations for the engine elements. It simulates how the flow properties like pressure, temperature, enthalpy change as the air and fuel move through each of the components. It takes inputs like inlet conditions, pressure ratios, efficiencies, bleed and power takeoffs, and calculate outputs like exit, con exit conditions, power produced, and etc. Think of it as doing the actual number crunching for each part of the engine. It is here that we define how many turbines and compressors we have, how many shafts, define the combustor, mechanical losses, extractions, bleeds, and etc. The balance block is where we will enforce the physical dependencies and design rules. For example, that the mass flow out of the intake is the same that goes into the fan. The balance block is where Pi Cycle enforces the engine level constraints, conservation laws, and design rules. It's in charge of ensuring that the simulated engine actually represents a physically possible and good design. It implements a set of residual equations, and these equations express things like the sum of torques on each of the shafts must be zero, that's the conservation of energy, the mass flow calculated for each component must be equal to the neighboring components, that's the conservation of mass, and the desired performance targets like thrust and combustor temperature, they should be met. However, it does not solve or optimize anything, but it flags design tries that are invalid to the next block, the solver. And the solver block is all about finding the equilibrium. It is responsible for finding a set of implicit state variables, which are called engine parameters for us, that make the balance block's residual equations equal to zero. That will effectively mean that a physically valid balanced engine design has been found. To do that, the solver will iterate on the state variables to find an engine that does not infringe in any of the balance equations. And it will do that using pretty advanced math routines. For example, it will change the flow through the fan to match whatever is coming out of the inlet nozzle. And by doing so, find a pressure rise in, that is compatible with the fan map. But this does not mean that the engine solution is the solution we want. So that is when the optimizer kicks in and changes the design variables to move the, the, the engine design closer to what we specified. For example, it might change the fan map to one that allows more pressure rise for the same mass flow. And to do this, it uses even more advanced math methods like gradient-based optimi optimization techniques. It tweaks the design values and then waits for the cycle, balance, and solver blocks to come back with a viable engine and then checks that it is closer to what we want. It will do that until it converges, like we're telling it to do. So, in short, here's how it works. The optimizer proposes a set of design variables. Then the design variables are sent to the cycle block the cycle block calculates engine performance based on the design variables. The balance block checks whether the design meets the constraints of the engine. The solver finds an engine state that balances these equations in the design, in the balance block. And this information is passed back to the optimizer, 
which uses it to propose a better set of design variables. And the process continues until the optimizer has found the best possible engine design. Now, if you want to dive into the math and the methods used by PyCycle and OpenMDAO for that sense, then you can start reading the rest of this paper. And it is very interesting, but also very sophisticated. For instance, if we go to figure three, it shows in more details the internal structure of the compressor. And remember that PyCycle is all about figuring out how gases change their state as they go through the engine. So a core part of every element, including the compressor, has to do with figuring out these thermodynamic properties, pressure, temperature, enthalpy, entropy, etc. And we need to know these properties to calculate the overall cycle performance of the engine, as we have seen in our turbojet series. In Pi Cycle, the thermodynamic properties are computed using a minimization of Gibbs free energy. And this alone adds many chemical equil equilibrium equations to the problem. But the solver is able to cope with that. We can see in the figure that inside the compressor element, there are smaller computation subblocks that are interconnected with each other. In this case, we have six subblocks. The pressure rise, this figures out how much the pressure increases as the gas goes through the compressor based on the compressor's pressure ratio, which is a design choice, and the starting pressure. Then we have the ideal total thermodynamics, and this block first calculates the ideal condition that will happen at the exit of the compressor. Then we have the enthalpy rise block, which combines the ideal compressor exit enthalpy value, the compressor entrance enthalpy value, and its efficiency to get what the enthalpy value of the gas is really going to be, as opposed to the ideal enthalpy that, enthalpy that we had before. Then we have the real total thermodynamics, and once we know the enthalpy, this block calculates a whole bunch of other thermodynamic properties of the flow. We have the power block, which knowing how the gas properties change, then this block is going to figure out how much power the compressor needs to consume using the torque and shaft speed to achieve the pressure change that we want. And then we have the real static thermodynamics, which finally calculates the static conditions at, at the exit of the compressor. So we can see here that in Pi cycle, the compressor and all the other comp uh, engine components are broken down into fundamental building blocks that will handle the thermodynamics and the energy conservation equations. Each block has its own set of equations and provides its, its part of the overall compressor model. This process is essential for the overall operation of Pi cycle so that the solver block can correctly calculate a set of design choices and so that the optimizer can choose the best set of design choices. And if you keep going, there are a lot of more details in this paper. Also, the engine we're going to model in the series is not the most complicated either. The paper uses a NASA conceptual model called N plus three to benchmark Pi cycle against NPSS which was for many years the de facto standard in engine modeling. And it passes with flying colors for this complicated engine. And you can see in the last part of the paper where they show the comparison of results between PyCycle and PSS, that the differences are really small. So that was a quick overview of PyCycle. Next, we'll need to understand the engine we're trying to model as best as we can. And that's exactly what we're going to do in the next episode, where we're going to dive into the CF-34 engine. See you there!